Hey everybody, if you watched the last two videos where we did an oil change in this Bonanza and you think that half of everything we did was wrong, well, you might be right. And I've got all the evidence and proof right here to show you. So we're gonna walk through all of these great suggestions from a lot of you in the community, things we actually did wrong. But not only that, is we're gonna announce the winners for this contest. So somebody's getting the Pappy Aero decaling kit box and some other people are getting E3 lifetime membership. So let's go ahead and start walking through it. Hey everybody, welcome back. And I'm looking forward to this episode because you guys in the community, as well as a bunch of experts, gave us a lot of great feedback on the oil changes that we did. Now, if you watch the other two videos uh, that we've done over the past few weeks, uh, there's two episodes where we did day one, day two of the oil change on the Bonanza. We'll be doing it on the extra here soon. But we purposely made some mistakes so that you guys could call them out and as a community, you could give us feedback and we could share it with each other. And boy, did we get a ton of stuff. So not only did we get a ton of stuff, but we also talked to some experts in the industry. Um, got some really good comments coming up here from some A and P's. And we're gonna walk through step by step a lot of the mistakes we made on here. Now I do wanna tell you guys that some of the mistakes that are obvious ones that we need to fix or something, we did that already. We went back and we changed our our uh, safety wire, um, we made some other changes. If you notice, I really didn't put oil on the gasket of the filter and we're gonna talk about that. So, um, but we said we did, but anyway, we went back and we made sure that everything was perfect. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna go through some really obvious ones that uh, don't need a lot of discussion. And then we're gonna go through the rest of them where we have some really good feedback from some of y'all and some discussions. And no, oh, by the way, as we're going through this, we'll be naming the winners of number one, the top winner that's getting the Pappy Aero Detailing Kit. So we'll be talking to that person here on the video. And then there's some other people that are getting E3 memberships. So we're gonna, throughout the video, we're gonna hand those out. Let's start with stuff that's like obvious, you know, and we've had a lot of comments that came in. Use gloves, that was number one. I'm lazy, I didn't use gloves. Glasses, probably a good idea, use glasses warm the engine. Well, we're going to talk about that a lot more, but I will tell you that I did say in there that the engine was warm and it was not hot. And we're going to talk a lot about the, the oil warming procedure there. Uh, wipe off the quick drain. That was another comment that came in. The tug on the run up. <laughs> I thought we'd get more people that actually talked about the fact that the tug was connected. Now it's not a tug with a big bar on it and stuff. It's actually a, an AC technology tug where the, the prop is literally as far as that as it is on the ground when it's on the ground. We did have chocks on the other wheels and stuff, but sometimes I do leave the tuck on there if I'm doing something or checking oil or something like that. It's not a good idea, but we left it on there and we only had one person actually make a comment about it. <laughs> they weren't worried about the plane or the prop because it's obviously and clearly is not even close to the tug. They're more worried about the tug. Torque wrench. Yes, I used the torque wrench to take the filter off and I shouldn't have. I had a ratchet right there. I used the torque wrench. I shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be using the torque wrench to, as a ratchet. So that was another good comment that came in. Only one person mentioned that. Another person mentioned that they had a towel stuffed in uh, the hole. I don't stuff the towel down in the hole. And by the way, these are rags that are, they're like shop rags that they don't come apart or anything. And all I do is I just lay it on the hole there and just kind of stick it there like that, just so nothing goes back in or, or anything like that. So from a FOD standpoint, I'm not sticking a, a rag all the way down inside the hole. So keep that in mind. But that, that was something that somebody mentioned, which was good. I want to start now with more. So those are just kind of the basics, but I want to start now with more of the things to have a little bit more of a discussion on. One of them is the safety wire. Some really good ideas came in. This one came in from, I think it's called at Shifttron, or that might be wrong, but we'll tell you in a minute who that is. But uh, a couple things on the safety wire pre-cut it before you go put it in. And he had some really great ideas, and I've heard this before, find a spot on the airplane that is the length, the perfect length that you need. So when you go to safety wire, you pull out your safety wire, you go to that spot on the airplane, it measures it, cut it, and then there's your pre-measured wire. So on the Bonanza, what you do is you take from the firewall or the wall, not the firewall, but the side of the aircraft, all the way out the wing to where the cord changes on the wing. Cut it right there. That's the ideal length for the safety wire for the Bonanza. 
on your aircraft, just find another spot, maybe from the handle to the front of where your cowling opens or something. Just when you do next oil change, find the perfect length and find somewhere in that. So every time you go do your oil change, you just cut it. So I'm going to talk about the safety wire process, though, because uh, there's a lot of stuff that came up in that. And I want to share it with it. And this is something that a lot of people had uh, called out and talked about. And we had already cut the safety wire off and redid it at the end of the filming. One is how we did the safety wire. If you noticed when I did the safety wire, I put the safety wire through, I grabbed the wire and I started to do my twist. I usually do eight twists per inch. One of the most important things is I didn't go all the way down the bottom and twist it by hand really tight. So here's just an example of what we're talking about and what that would look like. And if I don't twist it tight and you don't get it down there, this is an exaggerated example of what you would get. So you can see here that you've got the space in between here. Even if it's lower, you still got a space in there. And if you're torquing something, it has to be at a certain torque and you want it to stay there. You know, that play is not good. This is an exaggerated example of what it should be more like where um, I tie it, you put the wire through, you get way down the bottom, you twist it, clockwise you get it nice and tight there and then safety wire up the rest of it okay so i didn't talk about that in the video i didn't do that in the video and that was great that you guys called that out so on safety wire you can go to ac4313 and it gives you everything you need to know exactly what i just talked about about the safety wire step by step on the proper way to do that so it is an important item not to miss okay so we're going to talk about engine hot cold warm whatever <laughs> This is a, a big topic and there was a ton of opinions from experts, engineers, A&Ps. We got a lot of feedback and then we got a lot of feedback from you all. And boy, I wish this was a topic that was just cut and dry. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not an engineer and we're actually going to have some experts come on and we're going to talk about just this topic. But I'm going to share with you the feedback that we got from uh, some engineers, um, from some very uh, respected companies, A&Ps and from the community. So we actually, when we drained it, ours was warm. The engine was not crazy smoking hot. It was just warm, it wasn't cold. But I noticed there's been times that I've changed it when it was cold. I'm down here in South Florida, climate's 90 degrees. I come in in the morning and it is absolutely, everything is dry. The tubes are dry, everything is dry. So I think some of the conversations that uh, I've had here have to do with, are you doing it quickly in an hour or can you leave it overnight? A bunch of mechanics that we did talk to, they basically said the reason they're doing it is just because it's faster. That the hotter oil, the warmer oil just drains out faster and they're trying to get it done in an hour, hour and a half. And so they warm up the engine, they come in, the oil drains fast and it's done. But then on the flip side from some engineers, there was some talk about, okay, but now you got all that oil now up inside and suspended in the engine, the contaminants are in it and you just drained it out you plugged it up, you're done. Now that oil is draining back down and that oil is now in the new oil with the contaminants. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. Makes sense to me. Also makes sense to me that, well, wouldn't you want that if you're doing your oil sample so that you've got the contaminants in the oil before you send it off? So which one? The other thing that came up a lot was, depends on where you are. It, was, it had a lot to do with your climate. You know, obviously in the Northeast or in Canada in the winter, they're running their engines up, you know, getting those engines warm before they do the oil change. So climate has something to do with it in some of their minds, not my opinion. We're down here in South Florida, 90 degrees, and it flows pretty good. They said that the, some of the oil sample companies say it's recommended that the oil is hot when you take the sample. Some people say, doesn't matter because there's a cord in there that never goes out anyway. <laughs> there is a lot of question about when do you take your sample? You take it right away? Do you take it the very last drops where everything's draining out? Do you take it in the middle? And I know that if you go to Savvy and all the companies, they give you all the details on that. They got some great information on there on why and how you should take that. A master text here over and over said to me that it is in school, it is recommended, not required that the engines be warm for the oil change. Uh, we talked about climate. We were told over and over that the service bulletins for the engines don't require it. Now I did went and we went and looked at the Lycoming SB480 and it specifically does not say to warm the engine up. Doesn't mean you can't. Again, the mechanics pretty much all said it's recommended, not required. So this is just bullet points of stuff that has come through from community experts, uh, AMPs. Just wanted to share with you. I'd love to get more feedback from you guys on here and recommend like Savvy and other people that you think we should talk to and really do an in-depth uh, video on this particular topic.
Okay, so before we go on anymore, we're giving away one of the memberships to somebody that made a comment down below. So the first membership, and he had some really good comments, I just wanna say, if you guys wanna go check it out, make sure you go to the oil change videos and look at the comments, but uh, Thomas Murray 1807. So Thomas Murray 1807, we're gonna DM you and you're getting an E3 membership. All right, so now let's move over to the oil filters. This is a, another great discussion. Um, I talked about when we put our Tempest spin ease on it and keep that in mind because there might be something that comes up about the spin ease is that I had put oil on the gasket here. I didn't physically do it in the video. You saw me not do it, but I wanted to see what people say. And one person picked up on it. And then I had some conversations with engineers on this too. So one thing I will tell you is, you know, these gasket nowadays, they're big difference from 15, 20 years ago when I got my first airplane, but these are all formulated now where you don't put oil or any grease on these, on this particular brand anyway, and there's other ones too. Matter of fact, they specifically say on here, big letters, do not use lubricant or oil. These are already formulated for a couple specific reasons. One's is so that they don't bind up and, and you can still get them off. If you torque them to the 16 to 18 pounds, they're not gonna come off, especially if you safety wire it. And then it's still formulated in a way you're not gonna have a problem getting it off when you need to. More importantly is when you go to torque this down and you had put oil or some kind of lubricant on here, and then you wanna torque this to 16 pounds, you just messed up your torque settings. It's not gonna torque to 16 pounds or 17 pounds, or well, you will, but it's not accurately a 16 pound torque because you had lubricant on there. So now that alters what your torque is actually gonna be on here. So on this particular brand, and maybe that's why they call it spin ease, they maybe spin easy because you don't need any of that stuff. And it's because of how these are formulated. I mean, you can almost kind of feel it a little bit. Do not put oil or lubricant on these, this brand, or if the brand you're looking at, take a peek at it because they might tell you nowadays. I mean, our stuff's evolved so much that uh, from my days of owning air, original first aircraft that I have to come out of my shell and some of that stuff. So the second thing about oil filters I want to talk about, you can see in the video here that we're rolling in th that when I cut open the oil filter and then I started to pull the media out of the inside of it, I'm looking on the wrong side of it. <laughs> so if you look, I'm pulling it out like this and I'm looking straight down when really you need to be looking on the other side of the media because that's the outside where the oil comes through it and then goes into the filter. So only one person mentioned it. And by the way, that one person is also the person that mentioned some other stuff that is gonna be winning the Pappy Aero kit. If you haven't seen the Pappy Aero kit, make sure you go back and look at the video because it's, really, it's a really cool kit. So check that out. I was looking at the wrong side. I normally pull it out and I look at both sides, but the most important side when you're pulling it out this way is to turn it over and look on the outside of the filter for any of the contaminants or any metal or something. Another great tip that, that came in on that. So now I wanna talk about um, inspecting underneath after you get the next oil filter on. I actually think you should do it when it comes off, check it, and that's put a mirror underneath to check for any cracks or anything like that, especially leaking. Um, but more importantly, something that comes up that uh, a couple engineers had told me that people probably don't know. If you noticed in the video, I very specifically said, get a punch. This isn't a punch, it's a pencil, but get a punch with a very, very sharp tip to poke the holes in the top of the filter. Some people take a big screwdriver and you know blunt and they hammer big holes in it. What's happening is you're transferring that slamming down onto the housing. For our plane, the Bonanza, it's not that much of a big deal because it's pretty stout, but there are some housings where your hoses are coming in coming out and there's not a whole lot there. You've got a, maybe a mount that's sitting there. And when you're slamming on the top of that, you're gonna crack in some cases these. And a couple of the engineers in AMP say they, they've seen it, not a lot, but they've seen it, which is why I use a very, very sharp punch. So I'm not putting all that pressure on it as I'm banging it down. It's going through relatively easy and I create my holes. To the point of the mirror is to get a mirror underneath there with a light and just double check everything when you're done. Make sure that nothing was cracked under there or there's nothing uh, leaking or anything underneath in the housing area there. So that was another tip that came through from, from somebody. Next thing is, is the torque wrench. Somebody caught, which I was glad, one person caught my torque settings. This wrench was set at 16 pounds. I went all the way to 16 pounds. I got the green light, but then I went a little bit more until it went to red. And that was technically more like 17 and a half pounds. Now, obviously this says torque 16 to, to 18 pounds. 
But uh, the point was, is I went to the red and I said, oh, there it is, that's my uh, torque setting. And it was clearly over, it went to red. And it, really, you need to stop at green on this particular torque wrench. So somebody called that out, really great, thanks. And again, that goes back to the oil too. Imagine if I had lubricated that oil and I went to that, it actually would have been way more than 18 pounds that it would have been torqued on if I, if I lubricated that. Okay, so before we go on, we got another E3 membership we're giving out to somebody else who made a great comment. Now, I apologize. Hopefully I say this right. It's kind of a cool name, but we're going to be DMing you. And I think it's uh, the Flying Foodie Aviation something 1925. The Flying Foodie Aviation app. So we'll, um, we'll DM you, but you just got uh, another E3 Aviation membership. One of the last things I want to talk about is... Um, when we put the filter on, we had the lines on there. And I, I put lines on there because it just helps to see my quarter turn or my three quarter turn. But the right thing I was taught, and I said quarter turn on there, and then I said some people do half, some people do three quarters, is, um, you know, hand tighten it. Then with a ratchet, go three quarter turn. That's pretty much what a lot of the tech said to me, three quarter turn. I will tell you, I've done it, and we actually did it on the videos. Went three quarter turn, then I went and put the torque wrench on it and it still went another half a turn before I got to the 16 pounds. So I just use a torque wrench because I'm not smart enough or have enough feel to know if I'm in the right spot. I don't do this every day. All right, great, so that's about it. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about who the winner is of the Pappy Aero detailing kit. So it's going to, I think it's at Shivatron. So at Shivatron, we're gonna be DMing you and we'll be mailing you out the Pappy Arrow kit, and thanks to Pappy Arrow for sending it up. The other thing I want to mention is, for everybody that's already an E3 member, remember all the products and stuff here um, in your membership platform, you get some pretty significant discounts. Just this oil change alone, I have friends here on the uh, field that get their oil from Banyan Pilot Shop, and they save in just that oil change their membership for two years, their E3 membership for two years. So make sure you check that out. And uh, we got some engineers coming on. We're gonna talk about the oil and filters and stuff like that. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. Go check out the other two videos where we did the oil change and uh, we'll see you on the next one. So long.